Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, first, I want uh, to thank the GIS for the giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'm honored to be here and presenting uh, this case to you. And uh, then I will uh, be uh, ready for any questions or uh, observations or concerns. Uh, this case uh, was done just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, actually, it was a tough case and a tough call, especially when the patients arrive at 5 o'clock in the morning when nobody's around. So I will start the case right away. And this is mainly just a case that I did uh, two weeks ago of unprotected lift main. Uh, so mainly we see all the case in details in two sessions. Okay, so uh, the case is 65 years old male who actually had uh, coronary art bypass graft a few months ago. He had venous graft to the LED and venous graft to the OM. And uh, I know they will ask me why he had this venous graft, the surgeon, uh, went in and probably dissected the uh, lima, so he ended up with the venous grafts to uh, SVG and OM. And according to the report, uh, the RCA was too small for another graft. His cardiac risk factors include diabetes, hypertension, and dyslipidemia. He was never smoked. His ejection fraction was 45. That's after the bypass graft. It was normal before and uh, ended up with the ejection fraction of 45%. After the procedure, the patient went okay, stayed in the hospital for a week, and then sent home after that. Just in less than two months from the surgery, he presented with high risk non ST elevation myocardial infarction. He immediately was admitted to the CCU, and over the first two hours, he started to de deteriorate. His blood pressure started to drop and develop pulmonary edema. At that time, bedside echo showed ejection fraction of 25% with severe mitral regurgitation. I don't have the echo at that time because it was done just at the bedside uh, to see what's causing his hypotension. This is an ECG, ECG which you can see diffuse ST depression uh, all over uh, the leads. So the patient was taken to uh, the cath lab. So this is his coronary. Uh, just to let you know, the, there was significant lip main disease, significant, I'll repeat the picture again, and significant proximal LED disease. Beside this legion, the distal disease was not there, and probably that was the anastomosis size from the venous graft, just the two months prior to this operation. This is his lip main. There is a diffuse lip main disease. This is occluded lift, cir lift circumflex artery. The circumflex was not occluded prior to the surgery. RCA, total occlusion. And the claim was too small for grafts. And it was CTO prior to the bypass surgery. So at that time, the patient was hemodynamically unstable. I was looking for the grafts. At that time, he became very unstable, and the patient was intubated at that time. Immediately, we put into a balloon pump, and it was fishing for all the grafts. I couldn't find any grafts that was open. So basically, no LED graft, no OM graft, patient hypotensive with severe lift main, unprotected with the CTO of RCA occluded circ. So uh, that's a balloon pump. I'll just skip this one. At that time, we called the CV surgeon, and there was an option of redo was raised for versus high-risk PCI. And especially with the severe mitral regurg, you have to think about PCI versus cabbage or redo surgery plus mitral valve intervention. Since there is, this patient is in cardiogenic shock and pulmonary edema, and uh, we consider another SVG since there is no edema again. There's no point to send this patient again to the OR. Uh, at that time, uh, temporarily, we did POBA to the CERC, and this is just showing the wire, going to the circumflex. I want to show you the angle of the lift circumflex. This is a 0.85 balloon. It was difficult to cross that lift circumflex. We believe that the circumflex at that time was the culprit vessel that causing the severe pulmonary edema and hypertension. Although I am personally not a circ guy, I don't usually attack the lift circumflex even if it's too big. But in that situation, the patients, that the only difference at, that, at this time, that CERC is occluded to it completely compared to the angio prior to the surgery. 
and I start to get some flow to the left circumflex and it turns to be the large OM. I kept ballooning, trying to get any better flow. And eventually there is some Temi 2 flow according to the, uh, going to that OM. Another balloon, you can see how the angle is difficult. Flow is getting better and better. I'll show you. I have to use a guide liner to deliver a 2.0 balloon to the lift circumflex. There was no way to get this uh, any balloon, sizable balloon, into the lift circumflex without any guide liner. And you can see that the guide liner is there. Here, after 2.0 balloon, the blood flow is getting better. At that time, I noticed that the blood pressure started to raise up. And actually, at this moment, the, inner, the pressures went slightly down, although he ended up still in the ICU with a balloon pump and uh, inotropic support. At that time, it was 6 o'clock, oh no, it was 7 o'clock in the morning. Two hours to open lift circumflex, get acceptable results. What should they do right now? Should they proceed for PCI, high-risk PCI at this time, or just give the patient an option of redo? So, <clears throat> I work in the private hospital. Uh, it's always insurance-driven, and you have to consider the payment. So, if I say option of redo surgery, I have to stop and send the patient for surgery to decline this patient and then bring it back. Patients start to improve, so I took a moment and I just sat down, I think, and I thought we should talk about the redo surgery for him. Although I'm not a favoring of doing redo surgery, but at this time, I should reconsider this. With this acceptable result, I stopped. Um, patient was taken back to the CCU. He's still on the pressures and intraverting balloon pump. Management medically for 24 hours. He was given all anticoagulants, uh, agristat, dual antiplatelet therapy, inotropic support, in, in, uh, mechanical ventilated. Case discussed with the CV surgeon and the decision was go ahead with high-risk PCI. At that time, his echo showed some improvement of LV function and improvement of the mitral regurg. One would say the balloon pump may improve the mitral regurg, but uh, I had an echo again at the end of the procedure. After the second procedure, we showed that the MR is still mild to moderate, was not even touching severe. And there is a dramatic improvement of the LV function. Okay, so I started high risk BCI, unprotected left main. I started with Impella. Uh, Impella at least will give me some anxiolytic treatment for me. Uh, at least I get a bit of support for hemodynamics. Mechanical support is always good. And even if it's treating myself, I'm happy with that. Okay, so I took a picture just initially, still the flow. There is a severe high calcific osteo lift circumflex disease and severe mid to proximal LED up to the osteum involving the left main. There is a distal LED disease. I'm not a guy who I always try to avoid full metal jackets. In this situation, I was thinking maybe the LED will get him full metal jackets, but I will show you what the end result is. I wire both vessel, LED and circumflex. And for me, there is a flow to the LED, uh, sorry, to the circ. So I, we had multiple options. Should I go and hit the, cir hit the circ, LED left main, and then deal with the distal left LED? Uh, I had a patient a few months ago, similar situation. I left the mid to distal LED. The patients had severe ischemia during the procedure and arrested. So I decided to treat the mid LED first. I have a wire in both vessels. And then I will end up with a circ and then I'll do the bifurcation of the left main. So I treated the LED. LED was not that difficult. Pre-dilatation and then I dropped two stents. I know this, there is a still proximal osteal LED with distal lift main involvement. 
but there is no dissection, so I started now thinking about left circumflex disease. Uh, so you can see here there is a proximal LED up to the prox tight osteal LED up to the mid body of the uh, left main, very tight left circumflex disease. So I decided to go with DK crash for the left main. This time I didn't need the guideliner. The balloon went down. I used multiple balloons, probably eight balloons. One of them was high pressure balloon, which inflated to 34 millimeter mercury for the ox tail lift circumflex. Then I dropped a stent into the left circumflex. It was a long stent. I didn't need any guideliners after I properly pre dilated the vessel. And this is just to see how the left circumflex went. And then I went again. I post dilate the proximal part of the stent with a 3.5 NC balloon to very high pressure. I think it's a perfect result, but it was acceptable for me. Then I crushed it. No wire in the left circumflex, crushed that stent. This is just the tube projection for the same inflation. I cross and I did uh, kissing, which was the first kiss. And then that's the end, that's the result after the first kiss. You start to see good flow. I still I was not sure what to do with the distal disease at that time. But I said I will deal with it at the end. I dropped another stent, LED back to left main. It was 4.5 stent from the LED to the left main. There's no wire in the left circumflex, so you take it out. And then I cross, another kissing. And then one pot with 4.5 NC balloon. And then I did the IVUS. On the IVUS, this is this distal LED. See here in the middle part of the LED stand, it was not fully opposed. And the proximal part of uh, the stand was well opposed, and the left main stand was still not fully opposed. You can see very high calcification here. That's the stent that's not really well opposed to the wall. So I decided to post dilate the middle stents or the LED stent first with 4.0 NC balloon with the high pressure and then another balloon into the lift main 5.0 and This is will be the final results. A pericranial view and a caudal view for the bifurcation. I did the IVAS, but I didn't put it. It was well opposed. Everything was fine at the end of the procedure. Now I left with, should I do the distal LED or not? I know the runoff was not per perfect, but at that time, after 2.5 or two and a half or three hours of working on this LED, uh, sir, I always ask myself, if I see this distal LED isolated, I leave it. So I decided to leave it. Because the job is not finished, I have still, I have still RCA to work on in the future. Uh, so I, when I, I re-image him again, I will look at the distal LED and will see the flow. If the flow is fine, I will leave it. Otherwise, uh, I will fix it for sure. But I just hate the full metal jackets. Uh, that would be the end of result. The, the patients, this is ECG after the PCI, which we showed that dramatic improvement, even the LV function is better. Now the function is about 35 maybe percent. There is no significant MR. I mean, there is no severe MR. There is still at least mild to moderate mild regurgitation, but there is no severe MR. Patients back to the CCU within 48 hours, he was off process completely extubated 
before discharge, we were able to start anti-failure medications on him. I saw him in the clinic last week. He was doing very well, asymptomatic, completely immobilized, and I start to increase his anti-failure treatment. And that will be the case. I'm now open for any discussion or questions.